Welcome back everybody, this is Ragdog Gaming, and we're back with some more Outer Worlds. Alright, let's get straight into it. We're going to see if we can hack into the... Let's use it. Access file. Well, maybe I'm not, ha I'm not hacking in there. Uh, I had to borrow a copy of Young Space's Guard to Mechanical Engineering. Radio's been splurring. I need to... need. I needed the reference. Surely... I'll return the copy of the repair bay, access file 2, chaos error, mechanics gone haywire, gunfire, hearing screens, oh lord, oh law, sorry, I think uh, that was someone's leg, oh, okay, should leave really early today, would like to leave, but please deduct due diligence fee for my pay, thank you, proud member of Spaces family, there you are, except that. Well, uh, that was useless. Oh, I can get in through that door. Derp. Derpy do derp derp. Oh. You don't look good. You don't either. Energy canister. Radio. Okay. Now, question is. Do bots and stuff respawn? Let's have a look. And I do want to speak to that girl. Uh, Interstellar, I don't know what that is. Sounds pretty cool though. Likes it. Rizzo's Rangers versus Spaces Chosen. Okay. So Rizzo's Rangers must be pretty good. <clears throat> Eugene W. Smithers. Do they respawn? Here we go. Do they, do they, do they respawn? Seems like they don't. Which is very good. Whoa, what? Did anybody just see that? Alright, that's broken. I can hack into this now. Let's actually do that while we're here. Disarm security fences. Okay. Do recent logs. Error. Attention. Critically overdue. Radio. Criminal activities. Trust my luck. It's into legal activities are frowned upon in society. Avoid being seen if you want to engage in these. Okay. You're not going to dog on me, are you? Where are we headed? Uh, you mentioned. You wanted to ask me about something. You mean about the mission being too clean? Okay. Isn't it supposed to be clean? It's a church. In the bar, you asked if I was a drinker. Sorry. I know it. I'm going to guess that you're not a drinker yourself. I don't have a habit of. You're not a drinker Strong yourself. drink makes me sick. And it makes me real sad. I start thinking about things I oughtn't, and then. Well, never mind that. You got better things to think on. Sorry. That's alright. I want to know. If you don't want to talk about it, I'm happy to listen. Don't apologize. Oh, that's what I do. You'll tire of it soon enough. You said to me the mission was too clean. Isn't the church supposed to be? I know, but Flicker says the universe is a machine, that it runs by law. Real uh -huh. machines have gunked up oil, scratches, and worn bits. You can tell they've seen handling, been used by folk. Yes. The that's machine true. Vicar sees is one that ain't never been run. It, it's not for people to live in, it's something on a museum shelf, under glass. Yeah, that's good. You're a machine. You're a, oh sorry. <laughs> you're you're a mechanic. Whenever you see a machine, it in. Whenever you see a machine, it's in need of fixing. It's not. It's an ideal, not what we live in, but what we strive for. Then why do you want to talk to him? You're a mechanic. Fixing the universe is a job for somebody way better than the likes of me. No, I think you could do it. Okay.
Let's test this fast travel thing out. What's that? Junkyard? What's that? That's our ship? Okay, let's go to the... So I want to do that. And then I want to get the map. Who's that? What's that? Let's go over here. Let's get up. Let's have a look. Yep, there we go. Let's go to speak to Adelaide first. But first, we'll run into some gorillas. Ooh, what the? Okay. How do you get up there? What's that? I'll take it. Move along, stranger. We don't want any trouble. Yeah, I don't want any trouble either. I'm gonna put away my pistol. I'm gonna talk. I don't know you. She looks cool. Whatever you're looking for, it ain't here. Move along. Uh, I'm looking for Adelaide. I need some answers. Answers, huh? You must be one of those philosophicals. Already got ourselves one of those. Do you know? Where you said something about former workers living here out in the wilderness. <laughs> yeah, that's us. And you can tell Thompson we're doing just fine by ourselves. If you're gonna start wandering around my camp, know that I got my sights on you. She's gonna let me in. And by the way, your ears on fire. Just saying. Where can I find her though? Over in the hothouse, tending crop. Enough with the questions. No offense, but I've got a lot on my mind. We've all got problems. I just got shot into space. You and me both, I'm trying to figure out how to repair my ship. Well look at you, buzzing around the Aether with your very own ship. Rest of us gotta make do with the ground at our feet. No, I'm sorry. That was unworthy of me. Lady named Zoe went missing <clears throat> some nights ago. Just up and vanished without a trace. If marauders got to her. I hope not. Could always go looking for her. Don't tell me you're scared of your marauders. Could always go looking for her. I go for looking her. for Zoe. I leave the camp undefended. Seeing That's as true. I'm the only one of us who knows her way around the gun. Hence my dilemma. Okay. Any idea where she might be hiding? Vex me. If she told anybody, they ain't telling me. I'd check her room, but I got yelled at for snooping once already. Really? You snooped around her in a room? A little ways ago. She was always obsessing over her serial dramas. Wanted yeah. to see what the fuss was about. Well... I'll keep it's not like her. Zoe to go wandering. Figured she might be out scavenging, but that ain't exactly her talent. No. Can't imagine where she's gone. No request. Hill's a Woo. wide place. She could be anywhere. Good. That's great. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. I'll find her. Appreciate it. Honest. Yeah, but your, your ear's still on fire. Just, just saying. Okay, so she's over there. Wow, this place is cool. I like this place and I love this little botanical garden area. Nope, put it away. outside. If you're bearing illness, find a place to lay your head down and I'll fetch you a poultice. 
Whatever your troubles with Edgewater, leave them at the gates and be welcomed here. Any questions, dear? Um, you must be Adelaide. I have been called that, among other things. Green thumb, grandmother, the strange old lady who keeps flowers. <laughs> but yes, Adelaide will do just fine. Excuse me, Miss McDevitt? Sorry, it's just... You got such pretty trees in here. Why, thank you. You're Robert's girl, aren't you? I remember when you were but a sprout. Thomas speaks of you often. Are you staying long? You should try some of my tobacco-horn tea. What? I brew it in an old spittoon, but it's been cleaned. What's back on tea? Reed sent me to make peace with you. Is this your greenhouse? Looks like you've made home for yourself. You made a home for yourself here. Is this your greenhouse? No, dear. The garden belongs to us all. Life is the gift of the universe. And the universe yields its bounty equally, absent of prejudice. Mm hmm I like that. As far as you managed to grow anything out here. Funny. Never never knew you could grow tripe in a garden. Just, I'm but the soil around surprised. the veil went sour years ago. The secret recipe is a little bit of elbow grease, a dash of love, and a heaping pile of special fertilizer. What's a special fertilizer? Okay, let's do this one. Reed sent you. Reed Thompson? You here on behalf of that cold-eyed reptile? Let's hear it. What's Reed's idea of peace, then? You're living off the power that belongs to the town. Come back to the cannery. That's about it. Reed asks you to consider coming back to town if he's willing to make amends. Something about coming back to town or losing power. I wasn't really listening. <laughs> Ah, uh, you're living on power. Make amends. Spare me. Only thing Reed knows how to make is a mess. True. Like everything else that comes out of Edgewater, that peace offering is canned. Yes, it is. I and my own are living just fine out here by ourselves. Uh, Reed asked me to divert power over to him. He mentioned a geothermal plant. He would do such a thing. The question is, why would you agree to his plans? I don't. Your camp has power regulator needed to run the ship. Cannery's got a regulator. You want ship parts, you ought to rip them out of the cannery's guts and leave us be. If you're going down to the plant, you should divert power away from Edgewater and toward our end of the... You'd be liberating an entire town from a lifetime of service to that odious cannery. I might actually Seems do that. the sort of thing a hero would do. <laughs> what have you got against the town? You've seen that miserable excuse for a town with your own lamps. I have. Hollowed out workers laboring their lives away at the cannery, living off whatever scrap spacer's choice throws them. It's true. You know that's true, don't you, Ms. Holcomb? Your father died of overwork. His heart gave out. No oh, damn. He, he was tired all the time, sure, but he was old, ma'am, and he raised me all by his lonesome. Look what they did to this child. Lost her family to the company, and still she defends them. Oh, man. I don't much like you throwing that in her face to get me on your side. I'm all right. I ain't so fragile. That was unkind of me. I'm sorry, dear. Yes. What do you got against people trying to make a loot? Let's say I help you. What happens to Edgewater? Life yeah. in Edgewater grinds to a halt. The cannery shuts down. Workers desert in droves. And our own little camp grows and thrives. No. You think Raid's just gonna spend just trying to spot you? You bring power to Reed's town and you'll be killing us. Reed knows it. He's counting on it. Yeah, that's true. You will listen to your conscience. I will. And I think I'm going to do it that way. Yeah. 
I'm gonna do it that way. But first... Yep, I'm gonna... I'm going to do that... That... Grave man's... Um... Quest. To get the money for the graves. So I can get some more XP. What's this? Oh, that looks disgusting. Oh. Worst, worst. It's not the worst unless it's borst worst. Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> Raising a sneak unlocks sneak attacks while stealthing. <clears throat> First attack against unware. Okay. <coughs> Let's go into here. Go in the journal. Small grave matter. <coughs> Wait a second. Just past one. In there. Bob shop. Oh, I can cut my own hair. But Conrad sells real good to some. Your hands are probably crawling with germs. <laughs> Physical hygiene recapitulates moral hygiene. Cleanliness is next to lawfulness. I can't I can't disagree. Do your haircuts usually come with free lectures? Yeah, let's ask that one. We don't believe in <coughs> free anything here in Edgewater. We're a spacer's choice company. I'm Conrad. You will report to me if your hair fails to meet spacer's choice aesthetic standards. <laughs> you will also report to me in the event of your death. Whereupon I will clean and prepare your remains for interment. Cool. Thank you. Um, prepare my burial for what? in the unfortunate event of a fatality. It's what a barber does. We make you presentable. Right. Uh, speaking of burials, uh, Silas sent me to collect these fees. Ah, gravesite fees. Silas and I had talked about this at length. I thought I'd made it clear my pecuniary situation precludes the necessary restitutions. Pecunio. <laughs> um, you mean you're broke? As broke as pie crust, friend. Bitless, indigent, destitute. I simply cannot afford it. I am a blemish on the prosperity of our fair settlement. When I expire, I expect Silas to toss my body into a ditch. Oh, man, don't say that. Questionable word. Prosperity. Uh, that's a quality... Call the drama, Conrad. You should audition. Don't be so hard on yourself. I have to be. If only to prepare myself for my inevitable dressing down at the hands of corporate. Tell Silas I can't afford to pay. And that I fully expect to have my medical rights revoked for this dereliction. With my apologies. Oh man, I want to help him. Yeah, just give him IOU. Not a bad idea, but I'd need some kind of collateral. My pair of lucky clippers. No, that won't do. Your idea intrigues <coughs> me, but I'm afraid I don't have anything to give Silas. I'm open to suggestions. I'll let you know if I think of anything. Much obliged. Let's go check around his place. Ooh. Stealing. Receptionist shot himself. This is bad. Kami is going to have, a, have to call it for what it is. Destruction of Space's property. Eugene was just was an asset of someone. Somebody has to pay his body's price. This is going to ruin us. So I think that's where we that that we pawn off his teeth. Eugene had a full set of gold teeth. Aliens passed down fam. Processing everybody right. Just dig them out and pry them out. Uh, we'll, we sell the teeth somewhere. Nice and quiet. Use the bits to pay his body price. And nobody's the wiser. 
Uh, what do you think? Don't write back. In fact, don't talk to me at all. Just give me a special signal next time you see me. Waggle your eyebrows. <laughs> Feel this G Waggle them. How do you even waggle eyebrows? I'm sorry. How do you waggle eyebrows? There's a fish. I bet we can... We can sell the... The IOU will be the teeth. What can I do for you? I got it. I know about Eugene and the teeth. Why don't you use the teeth as collateral damage to the graveside piece? Yes. That's... You sound like you've had some training. I know a thing or two about medicine. Oh? Am I in the company of a fellow doctor? Yes. Only if you use the term doctor loosely. So you prepare for corpse for burial. Pretty specific job description. I'm guessing you were trained at medical school. You may think that, but the tidiness of my fellow worker is my responsibility. Alive or otherwise. Yes. Whether you're showing up to work or going to that great cannery in the sky, it's my job to make you look like a million bits. Okay. Let's use that. You know about Eugene? How? I'm a mind reader. You were probably poking around my things. I really shouldn't leave my letters sitting out in the open. Yeah, because Eugene's idea. golden teeth were a family heirloom. Representing three generations of poor dental hygiene. <laughs> he took them to his grave. Oh man. I'm sure he won't miss them. They were probably worth a few bits. I'm sure he won't miss them. That's unthinkable. Eugene's body and all rare earth minerals contained therein are solely the property of Spacer's choice. Are they? I can't ask Silas to dig up a man's body. And pry a few teeth loose from his jaw just to pay my bills? Can I? Uh, are you asking rhetorically? Because if you're being serious, then gross. <laughs> Desperate measures, Miss Holcomb. Desperate measures. I'm going to have to ask Silas to dig up those teeth. <coughs> it's the only way I'm paying my gravesite fees. Are you sure about this? I don't care. I'm just here to collect your dues. Are you sure about this? I'm sure that I have no other choice. Mm -hmm. Here you are. Gravesite papers affixed with my signature and an IOU. Cool. Goodbye. Where's that? Oh, cool. You can get stuff out of lockers and stuff, too. That's Martin. Let's go to Phyllis. Um... There, that Phyllis, yeah. Where? Up there. Oh wow, this is a cannery. Yeah, there's Phyllis. You the new worker? Whatever. Make it quick, Tenderfoot. I'm busy. Tenderfoot. Um, I'm guessing you're the foreman. Foreman Granger. <laughs> Mind those words don't come out of your mouth unless preceded by yes or right away or thank you. Uh, go for the fees. I'm here to collect. Shit. Silas still on about that. Here, take the fees. I'd appreciate it if you didn't tell Reed I was late on my payment. These papers aren't signed in your name. Because they're not my fees and not my gravesite. Guy I worked with shot himself. I paid the bill. Oh, what? Why? That's kind of your guess. You have to pay your neighbor gravesite fees? If you're not familiar with board law, you ought to be. Law requires delinquent gravesite fees to be paid by the deceased party's closest living relative, which meant me. How? Shame, though. Eugene was a good worker. <laughs> How does that mean you? You said the guy shot himself. Woke up one morning and put a round through his upper story. Can't imagine why. Thought he was an upstanding receptionist. <laughs> Just between the two of us, I'm pretty shocked his weapon didn't misfire. Spacer's choice handguns aren't the most reliable. I've heard. That's an awful thing to say. It must be tough, lo tough losing family. 
Eugene wasn't family. Yeah. I thought you said he was, he was the closest living relative. That's also that's an awful thing to say about your close relative, closest relative. Yeah, I was the closest living person relative to his body at time of death. I'm the one who found him, you see, so I pay the fines. Oh, bloody hell. Suicide's a crime. The legal term is irreparable damage to company property. What Eugene did to himself was vandalism. No, he shot himself. You can't be serious. What are you going to do? Arrest this? Arrest his corpse? Vandalism, huh? Did you have to clean bits off him off the wall or something? Ugh. What are you going to do? Arrest his corpse? When one of your workers commits a crime, <coughs> the entire town pays for it. In other words, Edgewater would have been penalized pretty hard. Whatever Eugene was worth as an asset, we would have had to pay out of pocket to Spacer's choice. That's stupid. He was a person, not an asset. Yeah. Well, excuse you. I'll have you know, Eugene was an asset to us all. May his Adams be commended to the law. All I know is Silas asked me for Eugene's gravesite fees, which means he was approved for burial, which means the town's in the clear. Oh. I'm just glad to put this whole ugly affair behind me. <coughs> Eugene can rest <coughs> his bones in peace, and the rest of us can get on with our own lives. That's just wrong. Get back to work. That's wrong. And what is these? I want that. Oh, he's right there. Can we get to this last person? He's in here. Yes, Mr. Thompson. I'm fine, Mr. Thompson. Never been healthy. Well, <coughs> did uh did Mr. Thompson send you? Well, you tell Mr. Thompson I'll be right at my post tomorrow, uh, bright and early tomorrow, because I'm definitely not plagued. As spry as a spring chicken. <laughs> That's old Abernathy. Uh, you want to tell me why you got so nervous? You some sort of wandering alienist? Walking into a man's own domicile, pestering him about his mental state? I'm here to collect gay fright fees. Silas knows, doesn't he? That's why he sent you. That's why he wants me to pay up. He knows. Uh, he told me everything. Pretty easy. You may as well hear it from me. I'm dying. I'm not long for this world. The date of my expiration is fast approaching. And soon I shall be ushered through the great cannery in the skies. Don't say that, Mr. Abernathy. You still got a couple decades in you? I'd steer clear, Ms. Holcomb. My affliction's bound to be contagious. It's and a plague. He's on Has to be. Silas knows. He knows I got one foot in my grave, and now he wants to charge me for the other one. Alright, guys, we're going to leave it this one. We're going to be back straight away talking to this guy. This is Rattle Gaming out. Please like, subscribe. That'd be great really helped me out. Thank you guys and we'll see you in the next one. Laters!